I want to stop you from getting from here on out. Oh no, it's okay. I have like 25 minutes to the next bus. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Um, I, I just wanted to, to basically I've been just trying to hear from somebody. I didn't know what was going on. I tried to contact. Uh, oh, what's his name? He's a black detective. I had an attorney too. I tried to contact them both, and I had a prosecutor's office. Yeah, and okay. I hadn't heard anything. All right, let me. So I don't want you to be confused, okay? And first of all, the only thing I want to know is the facts, uh, just okay. and, and just know what happened, okay? okay. All right. Um, so you are confused, um, public defender. I'm not on the prosecutor's side. Okay. okay. It's on the other side. Okay. Um, the the guy that's that's been charged. Okay. I'm the investigator. And one, and basically, all I want to do is fill in the gaps and the information okay. that they haven't given us, or that they don't even have. Okay. Like from your story, you know, of what, you know, what everything that happened. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Because I'm counting on what they wrote down, and, and not just know. I want to make sure that there isn't something. No, I understand. Yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. No, that's so, and that's and that's what I do, and and I try to make that real clear that you know all all I want to do is just find out you know what happened. So, and, and I'd rather talk to you than read a lot of newspaper or call you. I understand that. That's, I don't have okay. a problem with that at all. Okay. So you still have a problem talking to me? Nope. Okay. Cool. All right. What happened? Anyway, okay. <laughs> I was pregnant at the time. I believe I was four and a half months pregnant with my little girl who's 15 months now. And okay. I take the bus every day, all the time. Okay. I got off of the bus and was sitting at the terminal. There's benches coming here and then there was a gap. And then there was a bench at the side, and I saw him standing there. That's what, real quick. Let me let me ask you, okay? As you're coming in the terminal, it kind of it kind of is like this, and then this is the street right here. Yeah. That's kind of straight. Sorry, bad drawing. <laughs> okay. And like, don't they have the, like the terminal part in the middle? Yeah. Well, the buses will pull like it's open and it's a drive-through. Like, right. They'll drive through here and they all park okay. the buses here, here, and here. Show me where you were. Okay. They, we pulled in. I got off the bus here. Mm -hmm. It's where Tate's Creek is, up towards the front. I stepped off the bus. The buses were headed out. I was the last bus in. It was running late that day. Okay. I sat at the bench that was straight across from in front of my bus, and then there was a separation probably about this far over here where there's other benches. That man was standing at the end of those benches. He just was looking and staring or whatever, looked a little, you know, geeked out, kind of bugged out. Okay. And this and is like the middle of the terminal, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. And so I just tried not to pay no attention to him. I looked and looked over. It was me, him, and some other woman that was further down that was the only people at the transit center. Whoever okay. was in the office was there. And then there's a police officer that sits there. And for some reason, he hadn't been there that day. And I was kind of weirded about that. But then, lo and behold, he came around the corner. But long story short... Did you not see his car? No, he didn't have his car parked there, but he was there. He was just around the side. Was he in uniform? He was in uniform. They stay in uniform, and they always stay at the transit center. They always have a police officer present. Okay. He parks in the terminal. He'll park right here against this wall or right here at, at this wall. But his car wasn't there that day. So not that day. Know. So okay. I didn't know. Okay. Yes. And that's what I thought weird about it, you know, after it happened. But anyways... He comes, you know, he comes beside him, he sits down in the seat right beside where I'm sitting, and I said, how you doing, you know? And the office is over here. Office is further down. Right. Like, the office yeah. would be further back down this way. From yeah, because sure, you were, you were, like, right in here. Right, yes, right. where you're getting ready to pull out and go to the fire, and I think it's fine. Okay. But he sat down beside me, and he's like, can I ask you a question? And I was like, yeah, uh, you need to know when the bus comes? He, no. And he sticks a knife just straight in my side. And I panicked because I was, I was pregnant at the time. And I just took a deep breath and I was like, don't say nothing. And he was pulling something out of his pocket as he had a knife. Like, it was him this way, but it was with this hand. He was pulling something out of his pocket. He pulled out a bag and had like, maybe like that much half full of cocaine. Said, You're coming with me. Okay, so he dropped the he's, cocaine. He's sitting beside you and he yeah. used his left hand he to, used to stick hand the knife. To hold the knife to my side. Which pocket did the knife come out of? This one. This one, okay. Yes. He had a coat kind of like mine, a little fluffier though. Okay. It was the same color and everything, which I gave them that description. Okay. Pulled it out, stuck it to my side, and he was saying, you're coming with me. And I said, I'm not going anywhere with okay. you. And he said, you're, you're coming with me. And I said, no, I'm not coming with you. He said, we can make this easier, we can make this hard. And then as soon as I... Soon as I said that, the buses started pulling up. He panicked, and I said, I'm going to get the police now. He jumped up as he went around the corner. Here came the police officer. 
police officer just bypassed him by seconds. Didn't see him and didn't know anything until I ran to the first bus that pulled up. I walked straight in the doorways and I was like, notify the police immediately. I said, I need somebody to go to the office and notify the office. I said, some man just put a knife to my side and threatened that I had to go with him, you know, threatened me. And he, they said, well, they got on dispatch, called immediately, had somebody come to me. And then more cops came on bicycles and from the police station across the street. They took me over there and took my statement. A few minutes later, they went out looking for him. Well, the description I gave of him was somebody they were already looking for, I guess. They said he was wanted for a few other rapes and an attack on a pregnant woman and an attack on a police officer's daughter or some, something to that effect. And okay. they said that I couldn't have gave a better description of him. So, okay. Well, let me... Well, this was in 09, so I'm trying to... Really, you know, I'm okay. trying to... My drawing isn't that great, so I want to... Okay, if this is the street, okay? Yes. And it comes out here and comes in. Yeah, I'm gonna let you finish the drawing and, okay. and show me where like the, the, the okay, office, so office. Okay, the well here's the street. Okay. And this is where you come. Okay, well, I'll draw that. This is where the buses come into the terminal. They all park around this side. Right. This would be the flat base where everybody stands to catch the buses. Okay. These are benches, benches, bathroom, and then here's the office. So the, that's what that center thing is, is the bathrooms. Okay. And the office is kind of like the office first coming in. Yes, it's directly in the middle of the transit center. Like where you walk, where everybody stands to get on the buses, mm -hmm. the office is right there in the middle. Okay. It's directly in the middle, and then they have restrooms on this side and restrooms on this side of it. Okay. So you were by... I was on the I was at the end, going like where the buses, when they pull out to go out mm -hmm. to Vine, I was up at the front, not the back of the transit center. I was up at the front. Okay. So if this is where you're, if this is where the bus is going to pull out. Yes. Um, like I was said, more right here towards the middle, close to the office, but not all the way close. Like they wouldn't have been able to see from where I was at. Where was the bathroom at? The bathroom, okay, well, the How far were you there. from the bathroom? Well, the bathrooms are right directly beside the office, so the bathrooms were probably about right here. So I'll put the bathroom right here. Okay. Yeah, it would be bathrooms, office, and then more bathrooms, and then four benches, and then just the end of the transit center. From, from the very end, the very last, as you're going out the very last bench, how far up were you? Like, how many benches? You said it was you. One, two. It's two long sets of benches that are at the end up here. Okay. Like right up here, and I was at the one right before, and then there was one after it, and one after it, and then the bathroom, then the office. Okay, so there's like. You'd have to see them to know what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah. So there's like four, four sets. They got a bunch of sets, like one, two. Yeah. There's four sets, then there's a restroom, then the office, then a restroom, and then four more sets. Okay. So you were not at the very end because that's where the woman was. Yes. You were at the next one? Yes. Okay, and he was kind of standing in between? Yes, just okay. kind of lurking around, staring, you know, out there. Okay, which way did he go then when you he got He went up? around the side of the bus station. He took off that way, in front where we was. He took off this way. I was here. He was over there once he came to me. When that happened, he took off and went around okay. the side of the transit center. I don't know if you've seen yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. No, it kind of yeah. loops around where the buses turn as they pull out of the terminal. Yeah. They turn right there, and that's where he ran. Okay. As soon um, as the cops were notified, they had him on foot, bikes, and everything, and they were trying to find him right then and there. They didn't find him, I think, until like a week later. Okay. They came here, and I had to pick pictures and everything out of him. You said the officer just bypassed him. Just bypassed him. Didn't where was know. Where was the officer coming from? The officer was coming from around where he had just ran, but so, he came like, let's see. Place just probably took around that corner so quickly, and then not the 30 seconds later, the cop came around like they had just missed. So, each so they would have had bypass. They would have had to, and the cop said he didn't see nobody running. He said he did not see nobody running, okay. and he said not to say he wasn't there. He said I could have just missed him. He said he was on his cell phone that day, because I do remember that was brought up when they brought the report to me, and he said I was on my cell phone. There was so much going on. There was an alcoholic. They were picking up down at the end of the back of the transit center, I guess, on this side. And he was just not paying attention, but they found him. So as he disappeared around the corner, then the officer comes around. Yeah. And that was when you saw him. Yep. And just, and I told him, I said, I said he took off that way. He, he took off that way. And I asked, if you have cameras? Do you, I mean, do y'all have cameras? Can you go yeah. back on the camp? They didn't have the cameras at the time. They do have them now. But where I was at, they didn't have the cameras at the time. So it kind of 
made it harder for me. And I was so upset and so shooken up because I was pregnant. I didn't know what that yeah. hand was going to do to me. And I did. I, I panicked. I, I kind of panicked. I was scared. Well, yeah. I mean, I mean that's natural. Um, <coughs> what happened with the... You said he had the knife in his left hand and then he was pulling something out of his pocket. He was and pulling baggies out. Like He was asking me, like at the time, that's what I put on my report too, he was asking, you want to go smoke? Do you want to go get high? Or you come with me? And I'm like, I'm not going anywhere with him. And that's when he started getting a little bit more attitude. You're coming with me. Right. I said, I'm not going anywhere with you. You know, you, I, you understand I'm not going anywhere with you. And so he pushed the knife a little bit harder on my side, which at the time it did leave a knife. It did have a mark. It's gone now, but it did have a mark. And that's when I notified at the bus, the terminal, the buses had just pulled up. That's what spooked him and he ran. I don't know if he, because they have loads and buses, tons of people come out. Right. So he got scared and took off. And you were getting on the bus to take it back to Tate's Creek? Yep. Okay. Um, thank you. Um, no and see. What happened to the baggies? He, had, he dropped one on the ground, but he picked it up, he grabbed it as he stood up, just threw it in his pocket and took off. Like, and he, he was, was literally at a run. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. And he was on something. Like, I told them that when they first questioned me. I said the man was on something. He was not. And he was so clean cut. I would have never, you know, you never know. Yeah. That's a scary thing because they say don't judge a book by its cover. And, yeah. and they're right, don't. Because this man was clean cut, nice looking jacket like mine, little bubble ear, nice clothes, shoes, smelled good. I mean, I just, you just never know what people are going to do. They really don't. And, and I was shocked. Like when I gave his description, they said, we know him. He is somebody we are looking for. And once I pulled him out in the papers they brought me, they were sure it was him. And then they, they showed Jim. They showed me all kinds of pictures and I pointed him out of probably about 15 to 17 pictures of different guys. Okay. Did, and you gave them a description. They did a drawing. There, they did a drawing there that day. Or no, the detective, the female detective came and picked me up, I think, a day or so later. I think it was the next day, though. I'm trying to remember. It's been a little while. And I haven't heard anything about this. I've been wondering what was going on. Yeah, yes. we're, I think there's trial date coming up. I'm not sure. I'm not it's sure. Not it was supposed to. I thought Friday. they were supposed to film on June 3rd because they told me it was going to be on my daughter's first birthday. And I contacted the detective personally. Parsley. Yeah. Parsley. 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 Yeah. That's who I was notifying. And I've never heard nothing back from him, so I had no idea. I just said, well, I guess it's over. I don't know what's going yeah, no, on. No, there's, there should be another date coming up, so. Okay. Yeah. Is he incarcerated? It makes um, me feel at ease. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know? Yeah, I'm not sure right. Like, I couldn't tell you right now. Because um, I take the bus every day, and that still makes me nervous. <laughs> yeah, I know you. Um, the, the one that's been charged, I know he, he was out. Um, I don't know if he's back in or anything. Yeah, okay. um, let's see. Um, I'm trying to think what else I need to ask you. Um, about how tall was he? Uh, oh, man. I, he was definitely taller than me, maybe about six foot. Maybe you're six right one. In five foot three, five foot Yeah, you're pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> we're about the same height. Yeah. So yeah. about five, three and a half, five, four, yeah. And he stood probably about maybe that much taller than me, so he was at least six foot, maybe six one at the most. Okay. Maybe. I think he was tall. And he was thin, he was not, you know, other than his big bulgy coat. I mean, he was not a big guy. Okay. Um, and you said clean shaven. He just looked like any okay. other ordinary person, you know, no somebody that marks or anything. No not, tattoos. Not that I could see, because like I said, it was winter time or getting to be winter, and he had that big bubbly coat on, so I couldn't tell if he had tats or not. Did he have gloves on? Did he have gloves on then? Uh, no, I don't think he did. I don't think he did. I can't. I can't remember now. But I, I don't think he did. To be honest with you, I don't even know if they asked me that. No, that's really gonna make me think. I don't think he did though. I don't remember him having gloves on. I really don't, because that's how I knew his like his actual skin color. Because he looked mixed. I thought he was mixed. <coughs> um. Let's see. Um. Trying to else. Because you you covered quite a quite a few things that I was gonna ask you about, but you know, but. But that was my biggest thing was trying to figure out where exactly what yeah, happened or where it was at. How long do you think the whole thing took? Like, oh my gosh, maybe five, maybe five minutes. 
five minutes all together with everything, maybe ten with after he took off and whatever, okay, and then so. be notifying them. But the ordeal with him at my side, maybe about three minutes with him holding the knife to me. Okay. And he dropped the bag, he got nervous, picked it up, jumped up and took off when the bus is pulled in. So you told him, I'm getting ready to go get the police. Yeah. When the bus pulled up. Yeah. I said, I'm, I'm going to get the cops now. And he got nervous. I think that's when, that's when he got nervous. And, like I said, he dropped that entire bag of coke, picked it up, shoved it in his pocket, and just took off. He just, he was gone. He, he was quick, too. Okay. They didn't, I mean, I, I was so shocked to see that cop come right around after him. I'm like, you didn't see him running? He said, honey, I didn't see nobody running. But he could have went around the corner running and then stopped, you know, just to blend in with regular people. Yeah. And what, had the buses started unloading yet? Or were oh, they, they just were, no, They were unloading now. No, they, they all pull in different times. Some of them pull in at different times. They don't all pull in at the same time. Which the Tate's Creek bus was there. I remember the Newtown bus in front of it was there. The Georgetown way up front was there. And then I remember the Nicholasville room one was behind it. Because it was all the front section that was full of buses. And then the back wasn't. Had the, had the bus, like the bus in front of you, had it come to a complete stop when you got up? Not really. I kind of ran and hit the door. She opened it. She said, you need in? I said, yes, I need you to notify the police immediately. And she knew I was shoving up. She said, are you okay? Because I ride the bus at that woman see me every day. They weren't completely stopped. They were still coming in the they park. Were, yeah. And you got up, got up as they were still rolling in, got and up and took ran off. to the bus immediately, okay. yeah. Okay. How come you didn't go to the office? How, because, I mean, you're closer to the office. Why didn't you just go well, and get see, on up? I panicked. I think I panicked. I don't know what I was thinking then. I just panicked. And me being pregnant, I was, like, paranoid. And I was in out of the hospital my entire pregnancy. And I was having complications. And plus, I have health problems and seizures. So I didn't really know what to do. I think I just panicked and didn't do the right thing at the right time. I think once he put that knife to my side, I, sh I kept thinking now, you know, after it happened, I should have just jumped up and ran straight to the office. And I can't remember if it was a weekday or a weekend when that happened. I can't even remember, but I'm pretty sure it was a weekday. But at certain times, there's nobody in that office. Okay. And I, if I remember correctly, I might be wrong. I don't think anybody was in the office that night because they weren't able to ask anybody there that day. I do believe the cops went over and asked questions. The detective went over and they said, well, we was already out of here by 5. You'll have to come, you know, they had to go the next day and get questions. This, this happened during the day? This about, happened during the day. What time? Oh, uh, it had to have been about maybe 2, 3 o'clock in the evening. You think it was in the afternoon? Yeah, it was okay. in the afternoon. It was um, maybe a little after. That's why I'm saying I'm not sure. I knew it was in the evening time because I had just come back from an ultrasound. Okay. And then I was headed on the Tate's Creek bus to go home. Do you remember what time your appointment was that day? I know it's a long time ago. I'm trying to think. That was my that was my fourth ultrasound. She sent me with certain times, so I'm trying to think. Fourth ultrasound, so it would have been yeah, it would have been around five o'clock, and the office would have been closed. My appointment would have been at two o'clock. At two o'clock, it would have been at two o'clock because I had ultrasound set for certain times and certain months. Okay. And I remember I was four months pregnant then, so yeah, it would have been about two o'clock. Okay. And you were four months alone then. Yes. Okay. When when he first. Like you were already sitting down when he first came over. Did he wait till he sat down before he started talking to you? Yes. Okay. He was staring at me like really creepy. Like okay. he just stood, like say we probably were maybe maybe like this much so distance about eight apart. foot or so. Yeah, and he was laying up against the wall, had his leg kicked up, and just kept looking. You know, just kept turning and looking at me, and I was kind of spooked. It, and then I was like, oh, maybe just, you know the men check you out all the time. So I didn't think nothing of it, you know, and then he started walking towards me and I was like, oh God, please don't talk to me. <laughs> you get that a lot at the bus station and I'm like, God, I don't have time, I just want to go home. And that's when he sat down and he just, I don't get high, you know where I can get this, you know. I'm like, man, I don't know you. I said, I'm getting on a bus, I'm, you know, I'm pregnant, I'm trying to go home. And he just, that's when he pulled the knife out. He pulled the knife, he didn't like what I answered. He didn't like what I said to him. Okay. okay. Um, where, where'd you go to the doctor's office? At? Dr. Crone. Okay, is that downtown? That's or? Richmond Road. It's over there by North Eagle Creek. Oh, okay. Uh, right over there at uh, St. Joe East. It's okay. a building beside 160 North Eagle Creek Drive. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is it North Eagle? No, I'm thinking of the other one. Is it North Eagle Creek? No, that's North Eagle Creek. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
All right, let's just make it sure. My confusion comes, then you had to go from Richmond Road to downtown to back out to Teach Creek? Or? No, the buses don't run like that. Like, I had to catch Okay, good, because I don't know anything about how yeah. they run. Thank okay, you. Okay, yes, I had to catch the Teach Creek bus from out here, mm -hmm. take it to the transit center, okay. get on the Richmond Road bus, take it out to there, and then come back on the Richmond Road bus and transfer to the Tate's Creek. I was getting off the Richmond Road bus, which was further down at the end of the terminal. I had to walk up. Further down. Yeah, it was towards the office. It, yeah, oh, before the office. The Richmond Road was before the office. I had to pa bypass the office to come up to go catch the Tate's Creek bus. The buses were running late. Okay. Richmond Road was the only bus that pulled in. It was running 20 minutes late that day. I remember that because there was no buses, and I was like, man, I missed the bus. I gotta sit out here, and it was cold, and I was pregnant. And that's when I got off and went and sat up at the seat, and that's when I saw him in the white, the white, or I think she was white, but yeah, she could have been something else, but she was further down, okay. sitting on a bench waiting on her bus, because we had all just gotten off the bus. He was already there. He didn't get off no buses from what I saw. He was standing there when, when I got off my bus and came up. He was already standing just like this up against the wall. Yeah. Okay. okay. Seems like an awful lot of travel just to go. It is, and it is a pain. Oh, it is a pain. Because you're not that far right now from Richmond Road to go there. You know, that there would be a bus yes, you could just take it. They building. have it now. They didn't then. Now they have a transfer bus. Like, you'll catch it on the opposite side of the road over here. Then you can catch a bus on this side to take you downtown. And then on that side, it will take you down further down the street. And then out to Nicholasville. Well, they have it to where you can catch it down the street at Bold Bitter and connect to a different bus that takes you straight to Richmond Road. And it is so much <laughs> yeah, no kidding. It is so much easier. You're, no. you're probably close on time, aren't you? I don't want to make you late. Oh, yeah, I gotta get myself. Yeah, I don't have my. But I appreciate you coming yeah. and talking with me because um, I was trying to figure out what was going on. I didn't know if they had a trial. Yeah, comes. there's there should be another. An, th there's another court date coming up. There's a uh, trial date coming up. I just don't know when it is right okay. off. Um, I want to say it's, it's either October or November. Okay. Um, I don't want to have gotten back with you. Um, I don't know either, and like I said, because I got contacted deep. Detective Firstly, I mean, four or five times. Even I had my mother-in-law call and ask, you know, ask for him when I was work one time, and yeah. I haven't heard anything, so I just didn't know if it was dropped.